So you're just in time to join us for Straight Talk, where you get nothing but straight talk from our expert panelists and our host, Dr. Straight. And here he is. Hi, welcome to Straight Talk. I'm Dr. Straight. We have another episode for you today. If you missed us last time, this is where we have a chance to hear from you, our staff, and our patients. We get a chance to answer your questions and get out any information we think you need to know. First question from our first patient is... Hi, Dr. Strait. If I have soreness, which is better for treatment, heat or cold? Well, part of that's going to depend on personal preference, right? But uh, if it's a new, fresh injury, um, it just happened, I think ice might be preferred. Uh, the idea is that you're reducing swelling, and swelling may actually increase your pain. Um, however, you got to be careful because if you use the ice for too long a period of time, now you've got another injury from the cold itself. Also, um, we don't want you to have a more significant injury thinking all you need is ice when really you need more significant medical attention. If it's a chronic nagging pain from an older injury, particularly from a muscular type injury, um, heat might be preferred, it might be more soothing. Um, but again, be careful. I, I personally have had patients who um, had nerve damage to the area, weren't really realizing how hot it was, and created some skin damage. So make sure you take care of yourself first. Um, if you're concerned about a pain, definitely talk to your doctor. There may be something else going on or other um, techniques that we can use to help you so you don't feel like you have to use a heating pad all the time. And now we're ready for our second question. Question number two. Dr. Strait, I have a question. When should I be concerned with my child's weight? Uh, even though I'm a dermatologist, this actually comes up frequently in my clinic when I'm talking to parents about their kids. Uh, sometimes they come in with a letter from school talking about a skin change that the school noticed, either at the school physical or a school screening, um, because public schools often are screening for this now. And the skin condition is a darkening around the back of the neck or the armpits, sometimes other areas. Um, this condition is called acanthosis nigricans. That's a mouthful to say, um, but really more and more people are becoming familiar with this uh, as schools are screening for that, and that, that's a great service because we want to pick it up when we can. But the skin change is actually an indicator that something's already gone wrong. So the body has already started to have trouble managing blood sugar and the way it manages insulin. There may be some insulin resistance, prediabetes, and this phenomenon really increases the child's risk for juvenile diabetes. In the military healthcare system, we have uh, specialists who have specific expertise in this area and today joining us we have Dr. Candace Percival who is a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force and a pediatric endocrinologist uh, and so um, Dr. Dr. Percival um, how would you address this question of when a parent should be concerned about their patient's weight? I'm so glad you asked that question Dr. Strait because a lot of people think that we really need to focus on children that are already overweight or obese. A lot of research and time is dedicated to children that already meet that criteria. However, our best defense against the childhood obesity epidemic is actually to focus on children who are not already at that point. Our best defense is prevention. Great. Thanks, Dr. Percival. I appreciate that. Uh, actually, I had a question for you myself. What does the latest research tell us about the relationship between screen time and the risk of childhood obesity or diabetes? That poses a really interesting question. A lot of kids are being exposed to screen time at exponential rates compared to what they used to be. And so it's important to realize that kids with increased screen time are at risk for some of the risk factors that come with obesity and overweight. And this is due to a couple of reasons. One is that children eat more while they're watching the screen, and this has been well documented. Another reason is that billions and billions of dollars are spent with industry money to encourage children to eat foods that are high calorie and have low nutrient density. And so this is advertising spent on our children to encourage them to eat foods that are less healthy. A third thing is that children that watch more screen time are just less physically active. And so they're less likely to participate in the activities that make us more healthy. So for all those reasons, it's recommended that children get less than two hours of screen time per day. Um, and children less than two years of age really should not have any exposure to screen time if possible. Great. Thanks, Dr. Percival, for your expert advice. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Straight Talk. I always want to remind everyone that what you don't know can hurt you.